The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is again from our epistle reading for this past Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. We're looking at Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. When the day of Pentecost came, the disciples were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya from near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. My dear fellow Christians, to whom, to whom the Holy Spirit is coming, well, whenever we hear the Word of God. I told you that the Old Testament festival of Pentecost was one of three annual harvest festivals that the Jews would observe it also happens to be one of the three great festivals in the religious life of the people that the Jews were supposed to celebrate by coming back to Jerusalem if they were living in other lands. Those two other festivals were the Passover and then the Feast of Tabernacles. But Jews from all over the world were supposed to come back to Jerusalem for this festival and and if people weren't able to come back well that meant that that Jews throughout the Roman world and beyond they'd be going to their synagogues to celebrate this special festival there really is no way to know how many people could have been in Jerusalem for this Pentecost festival but I did do a little bit of research and there was one person who suggested that on that Pentecost there could have been, oh, maybe from a minimum of about 200,000 people up to maybe even a million people that could have been there for this festival. And, well, what a day it was. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said to the disciples, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Well, there was this sound of a violent wind, there were those tongues of fire, what appeared to be tongues of fire that were resting on the heads of the disciples and, and then they were filled with the Holy Spirit and our reading says they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. God knew what he was doing. God always knows what he's doing and, and his timing is always perfect. Our reading says, now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. <clears throat> 
most likely those Jews who had come from all over the Roman world and beyond, they probably were people who knew the Old Testament Hebrew language or, or the Aramaic language, a sister language to Hebrew, which was spoken in Palestine at that particular time. And in a sense, they didn't need the disciples to be able to speak to them, most likely, well, speaking to them in their other language, they most likely didn't need that. But this is a fulfillment of prophecy, of course. Our reading says, utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? That is, they, they weren't people who were likely to be educated in other languages like this then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? The Holy Spirit was using this miracle of their being able to speak in tongues like that so that the, the Apostle Peter and the others, that they would be able to preach and teach the people the word of God. And just think about the effects of the disciples preaching that day. Luke tells us that 3,000 souls were added to the church that day, the New Testament church that day. Some of those people were unbelievers who were called to faith in Jesus the Savior. Others of those 3,000 would have been Old Testament believers, people who knew the promises of God, people who were believing in those promises and who were looking forward to the day when the Savior would finally come, when the Savior would come and would fulfill all of those Old Testament promises. Some of those people were residents of Jerusalem and the land of Palestine and but many of them were from also from all over the world. After the Holy Spirit reached those people, after he touched those hearts, after those people saw that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament promises, well then, well, there were those that stayed in Jerusalem, of course, and then there were those who went throughout Palestine and went throughout the Roman world and beyond. And most likely what happened is that when they got back to their homes, what did they do? They shared the gospel with others. And what the Holy Spirit was doing is he was reaching out and he was taking advantage of this wonderful opportunity to not just let the people there in Jerusalem know, but people throughout the world knows. And only God knows the effects of the preaching of the apostles and the Holy Spirit reaching out to people that day. Well, the people said, Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own language and own tongues. Just think of all of those nations, all of those people being reached with the gospel, the Holy Spirit reaching them. But here's the key in that section. They heard Peter and the others declaring the wonders of God. That meant that they heard the same thing we keep on hearing today. They heard, well, first about their sin and the consequences of sin and how we deserve God's wrath and eternal punishment. But then they also heard how Jesus lived and died for them and paid for all of their sins. How Jesus is the seed of the woman who was promised to crush the serpent's head. How Jesus is the fulfillment of that promise that was made way back to Adam and Eve thousands of years ago after the fall into sin. 
how after thousands of years, God was finally keeping his greatest promise of all. And the Holy Spirit, he was reaching out through the word of God to so many people that back then, and he's still reaching out to more and more people today so that more and more people would know God's grace and love and forgiveness and the way to eternal life. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, keep sending us the Holy Spirit through your word so we are always built up and strengthened in our faith and always better equipped to go and preach the gospel so that the Holy Spirit is still reaching out to more and more people. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.